Our next presentation is by Mark Rizzo. It's entitled Gender Differences in Behavioral Treatment Effectiveness Across CBCL Subscale. Our supervisor was uh, Dr. Amy Bluebrock. Well, as uh, Dean Luger said, uh, my name is Mark Rizzo, and I'm going to be presenting my research this summer. Um, change the title a little bit, we'll explain that here. Uh, child Demographic Differences in Behavioral Treatment Across the Child Behavior Checklist. And before we get started, I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Amy Badurbarak, who was my faculty sponsor, as well as Creighton University and the Dean's Award Committee for funding this research uh, this summer. An important thing to note before uh, we get into the details of the study is that this grant was given to me to explore any potential gender differences that exist within the Child Behavior Checklist, or CDCL as I'll be referring, uh, referring it as. Um, but because we really didn't have any significant results in the data in terms of gender, we also looked in other demographic variables using, using the Child Behavior Checklist. When looking at the literature, basically substantial research is telling us that girls are typically internalizing any psychological <coughs> problems that they may suffer from, internalizing meaning, holding stuff in, uh, develop, developing anxiety problems, uh, developing de depression problems, and boys are typically externalizing any psychological problems that they may have, things like acting out, aggression, etc. Even when we apply to a multicultural setting, girls are typically showing higher levels of internalizing problems than boys. But in contrary to that, um, girls are also starting to show in more recent research higher levels of externalizing problems as compared to boys. When looking at ethnicity, we're typically seeing that minority youth are being actually diagnosed with behavioral and emotional problems as well as daily function issues more than Caucasian youth. Um, the direct cause is pretty unclear, but what is known with uh, research is that child ethnicity is somehow associated with internalizing, externalizing, and total problem scores on this CBCL. And in terms of treatment, some research has even said on specifically that most children benefit from treatment except for, um, for some reason, African American youth. Um, all other uh, races seem to improve internalizing and externalizing problems. When we look at parental stability, the basic understanding here from research is that any kid who is adopted or has some sort of parental instability as they're growing up typically faces more behavioral problems as they're growing up. That also applies to um, treatment, um, but mostly to behavioral problems. When we look at it from the other direction, kids who are scoring higher, it's basically at this clinical level in the CDCL, they're also two and a half times more likely to come from at least four or more different placements as they're growing up. When looking at the socioeconomic status variable, research is telling us basically that kids who come from a lower socioeconomic status typically have more behavioral problems and benefit from treatment less, although the direct cause is pretty unclear, and that understanding is pretty consistent across research. This specific study was an archival study that used 224 children ranging from the ages of 2 to 6 years old. Our sample consisted mostly of boys, but we also had a good amount of girls. When we look at race, we mostly had Caucasian, but also had a good amount of African American and Hispanic youth. When looking at funding for treatment, which ultimately made up our socioeconomic status variable, most of the kids in this sample were funded through Medicaid. Next was Title 20, then private pay, as well as a small amount of other kids needing some different type of funding. When looking at parent-child relationship, which made up our parental stability variable, we had most of our kids living with at least one or both biological parents, followed by foster parents, foster parents hoping to adopt that actual kid, and then adoptive parents, as well as other. In this specific study, we used children who came from a Midwestern day treatment facility for acting out behaviors, things like getting kicked out of daycares, things like getting kicked out of school, or running in trouble with the law in some rare cases. It's important to note that the number of participants that we had for each demographic variable explored varied slightly from 224. 224 is the number for gender, but the reason why it varied is because it's not mental health practitioners filling out these evaluation forms, it's, based, it's caregivers. Um, because of that, sometimes they may leave out important demographic data on these evaluation sets. But our ground rule for developing this sample was that the child needed to have both completed pre-treatment data and post-treatment data on this CDCL. Yeah. 
So getting into the measures, we use the child behavior checklist. The child behavior checklist is a reliable and valid assessment tool to evaluate any behavioral problems, behavioral disorders, clinical problems that the child may be facing. And how it's done is through a, um, a, a several a hundred item test that evaluates specific behaviors and the frequency of them. The CDCL is broken down from those specific items into three broadband scales of internalizing, externalizing, and total problems. And then it's further broken down into specific subscales, which are made up within those broadband scales, as indicated on the screen here. The specific procedure that we use, the treatment center already collected historical CDCL data and demographic data as a part of their standard treatment already. Like we said, the primary caregiver takes down the data within this CBCL, and before we even got started, the IRB approved this study um, uh, before we proposed the grant. Just to be clear for the variables we're exploring, um, gender is pretty straightforward comparing male to female, but the race variable is comparing Caucasian to non-Caucasian children. Socioeconomic status is comparing Title 20 recipients and Medicaid, which make up lower socioeconomic status, against other, which is made of higher socioeconomic status, which was mostly private pay. Parental stability variable was made up of biological or adoptive parents, which we consider stable parental um, supervision, against any kind of foster parent, which we consider unstable. Basically, my hypothesis here was I expected to find more variants uh, for the, the CBCL seven subscales of me measurement compared to these three broadband scales of measurement when looking specifically at gender. But I also expected that Caucasian children, children who have come from a higher socioeconomic status, and children who have a sense of parental stability, to have significantly lower scores in this CBCL evaluation tool. Finally, I did expect some sort of interaction between treatment and both parental uh, placement stability and a higher socioeconomic status. So getting into the results, it's important to note that in every case, treatment was significant, that treatment worked for these children in this day treatment program. When we're looking at these results, it's important also to remember that we're using a multivariate ANOVA, uh, better known as an ANOVA. So getting into those demographic variables, gender specifically focusing on the broadband scales, we found both no significant between subject effects and no significant within subject interaction effects occurring here. And when we went into the subscales of gender, we also saw an even less variance no significant between subject effects and no significant within subject interaction effects occurring. When we look at race, specifically the broadband scales, no significant between subject effects were occurring, but we did find nearly significant within subject interaction effects. Now the reason we say nearly significant within subject interaction effects is because all of the dependent variables in this CBC, or I'm sorry, in this MANOVA are the CDCL broadband scales, internalizing, externalizing, and total problems. But we are also dividing these kids into fairly small cell sizes um, within this evaluation, so the MANOVA power was relatively limited. Because of this, we wanted to do follow-up univariate ANOVAs for anything that had a p-value of 0.1 instead of the normal 0.05. So we did those follow-up ANOVAs with the within-subject interaction effects of race and found that both internalizing and externalizing broadband scales also had within subject interaction effects were occurring within that uh, specific broadband scale. And that's shown here. When we look, the, the pre-internalizing, pre-total just means before treatment. Post-internalizing, post-total, after treatment. You can see when looking at both uh, pre-treatments, we see that non-Caucasian kids are scoring higher mean scores on the CBCL, which is more behavioral issues than Caucasian kids. But when we go to after treatment, we see it switches and see that Caucasian kids are actually having higher mean scores on the CBCL uh, than non-Caucasian kids. And this is just kind of a graph showing that interaction taking place um, before and after treatment in terms of internalizing and for just total problems. When looking specifically at, this, at socioeconomic status in the broadband scales, we find significant between subject effects occurring here, but no significant within subject interaction effects. When we do these follow-up and univariate ANOVAs for these between subject effects, all three broadband scales had significant, or significant between subject effects occurring within them. And we can see that on this chart. It doesn't necessarily matter whether it's before or after treatment. What we are seeing with each of these broadband scales is that kids who come from a higher socioeconomic status are scoring lower mean scores on the CDCL 
less behavioral issues. When looking at parental stability, finally, we found nearly significant between subject effects, but no significant within subject effects. Doing these follow-up ANOVAs for these nearly significant between subject effects, we really didn't find any specific broadband scale that stuck out, just when we had the MANOVA analyzing as a whole these between subject effects. So what do these results mean, putting them together? Basically, in terms of gender, we're not finding any gender difference in terms of behavioral problems, and we found no gender differences in terms of treatment effect or treatment benefit by gender. Why this is, maybe it's because boys and girls are actually, actually starting to show similar behaviors because of changing roles uh, in society in terms of gender. Um, it could also be that these children referred to this day treatment center are going for particularly the same reasons, which is interfering with daily function, getting through a school day, getting through daycare, those kinds of things. When looking at race, Contrary to research, race really wasn't associated with any behavioral differences, but we did find that non-Caucasian kids are actually benefiting from day treatment more. Why this is, it could be a reporting bias by the caregivers, definitely, as we said, it's not mental health professionals about filling out these forms. Um, and just the fact that a structured day treatment program could actually just benefit um, uh, minority youth more. Um, whatever it is, more research needs to be done in this area of race and its impact on behavioral differences. Socioeconomic status, children who come from a lower social class show more problematic behavior than kids who come from a higher socioeconomic status, but don't necessarily benefit from treatment um, better. Why this is, it just could be that kids who come from a lower socioeconomic status face additional stressors as they're growing up um, that kids from higher socioeconomic statuses don't necessarily have to face. It could also be that kids who come from a lower socioeconomic status don't have access to additional resources, specifically medication, that could help them effectively cope with some of these behavioral problems. Finally, parental stability. We found some sort of trend that parental stability had towards um, behavioral differences in children, but we actually did not have a significant amount of foster parents in the sample so we really can't make a definite statement about that. Regardless, more research does need to be done in this area. Finally, um, the overall implications here is that demographic variables are an important thing to consider, especially when we're looking at it from a liberal alpha level of point one. And in the end, demographic variables need to be considered when uh, evaluating any kind of behavioral differences in children and looking at treatment effectiveness, specifically day treatment programs uh, for youth. And that concludes my study, and at this time, I'm going to take any questions.